Frame number two, F11 at the thirtieth of a second. Greetings everybody. Welcome back to the landscape, very moody landscape. Today I've got a small window of opportunity where the rain forecast to ease off and it has done so I'm out but I'm out today with a very different camera uh, this is my Olympus OM2N uh, which was released in 70 I can't remember I'll put a caption over here um, but this is uh, from the Olympus OM version of film cameras that were first uh, released to the market in 1972. Uh, I can't remember the actual date but this camera it's knocking on the door of 40 years old and it's still in perfect working order. Kind of begs the question why am I out here in this fantastic place with a film camera? Well the honest truth is that when I was 16 long time ago now my parents gifted me a 
It was an OM10 film camera and it's where I cut my teeth. Learning aperture, learning the relationship between aperture and shutter speed and uh, you know all those things that now I more or less take for granted. I always had a hankering uh, to collect more of those camera bodies and just recently I've been afforded the opportunity to do just that. So out of the 16 um, M or OM bodies that were produced, I have eight examples, uh, including my original OM10, which still works. In fact, all eight bodies work perfectly. They've all been film tested uh, and they all work you know, as intended. So that was kind of the initial, the initial draw, the actual wanting to start a collection. But it kind of got me thinking, well, I've got this collection, I've got a collection of lenses as well. It seems a bit of a shame really that they just sit on a shelf and do absolutely nothing. Why don't I, why don't I actually learn how to use them again and use them properly? all over again. Hence me being sat here. Now film is fickle. Film you've got to get right. Film you've no idea whether what you've just taken has actually come out. I've often commented that my Sigma FPL, my full frame digital camera, rewards you if you use it deliberately. It rewards you if you slow down. The way in which you use it slows you down deliberately, just, just the way it's laid out. And I like that. Film is exactly the same. You have to go into film very, very deliberately. Uh, this film, uh, the film that's in here, which is uh, Fujifilm Acros 100, uh, plus the cost of processing, and all the postage and packing, I'd be looking at around about 75p to one UK pound, 100 uh, pennies per frame. And that definitely makes you think, it definitely slows you down because you don't want to waste a frame. You don't want to, you don't want to send it away and then come back with complete trash. You might come back with some howlers um, but that's the nature of photography. We all do that in our digital cameras. But with film, it definitely makes you think, which is why I chose to put a, a filter on the front because in comparison to the land, the sky is actually very, very bright. One of the other things that I like about film is I used to really enjoy that anticipation. The taking of the image and then sending the film away and then having to wait a period of time before you saw the results and you, you know you'd know it would take between you know, four days and a week uh, for it to come back to you but and as you got closer to that week deadline you'd be like oh, come on post come on post come on post I want to see what I've done and as long as in that roll of film there's at least one frame that comes out okay, I was always happy. And that's certainly true um, now, especially at the moment as I'm still learning or re-engaging, I suppose, with film and film photography, learning how to use this camera. And this camera is a manual camera. There is a, a light meter inside, but the light meter is a little needle that goes up and down and in the sweep of that needle, there's two little markers, uh, one pointing down and one pointing up. If the needle sits banging between those markers, then your combination of aperture and shutter speed, spot on, so the meter believes. If the meter is slightly high, the no needle is slightly high, you're getting towards the arrow that's pointing down, then there's a risk of overexposure. If the uh, needle is towards the bottom arrow, the one that's pointing up, then there's a risk of underexposure. Now I've never used a camera manually, even with my 
digital cameras, I rely on the histogram to tell me what my exposure is doing. All I've got here is a little needle. And again, I quite enjoy that manipulation and just watching that needle behave. And then also thinking about, so if the needle, let's say it won't be right at the top, uh, sorry, it won't be right in the middle, then I'm gonna to have to go for a compromise. One of them will be slightly low and one of them will be slightly high. I will make a note of what I've done. And then when I get the film back, I'll be able to see the results. And I've no idea whether Acros 100 uh, copes with being slightly overexposed or copes with being slightly underexposed. But that's part of the excitement. And that's why I love this process. And I'm watching the scene change in front of me. So U Barrow is now completely free of cloud. Um, uh, Great Gable and Kirkfell, they're swathed in cloud and Scarfell is also swathed in cloud. I'm just going to check the old meter. The meter is more or less bang in the middle. So I am actually going to take another frame. Uh, I might need to put my spectacles on for this. So this is at cross 100. Uh, we are F11 at 30th of a second. I love that sound. I absolutely love that sound. And that's it. That really is. It, it's a wonderful, wonderful process. I'm also learning how to scan film. Um, I never actually realized how, uh, or remembered I should say, how grainy 35 mil film can be when you scan it and you see it really large uh, on a screen. But of course there are all sorts of different ways of dealing with that now because we've got all sorts of different types of software. But again, the, the process of scanning and uh, playing with dust, you know, trying to avoid dust. Yeah, do you know what? <laughs> Sometimes it is a bit frustrating. But then when you get it and you get it right, that sense of satisfaction is just, it's wonderful. It's brilliant. I absolutely love it. And I'm really, really enjoying the engagement or re-engagement with film and film photography. Now, while I sit here, one of the other things that I brought with me is a red filter. Perhaps I ought to try that red filter. Hmm. Let's do a speed up of me trying that red filter. Let's have another look at the old meter. What's it saying? It's now saying quite gross underexposure. So let's play with the old shutter speed. Oh, now I can't get it. I'm right on the bottom arrow or I'm right on the top arrow. Okay, all right, that's fine. So we're gonna to have to do it twice then. So, we are on frame number four, and we are going to do F11 at 1 15th of a second. Like so, wind him on. Look at the meter again. Yeah, the needle is just touching the top arrow. I've wound him on, haven't played with anything else. Just make a record of what's going on. So this is frame number five, one eighth of a second at F11, which according to the meter is slightly overexposed. Lovely. And that's it. 
It's as simple as that, guys. I don't know whether any of you have tried film photography. I will warn you, it's not cheap. Um, I mean, I got these films a, a good deal. I bought them in bulk from a chap on eBay and they're in, in date as well, which is good. Um, processing, definitely shop around for processing. Uh, anything around sort of the six, seven, eight, ten pound mark, depending on whether you want um, low resolution or high resolution skin, scans. Skines? What's a skine? A scan. Uh, I always have low resolution scans, so I'll develop a low resolution scan. Um, I use the low resolution scan a bit like a, um, a contact sheet where I can just scroll very quickly. Uh, see which images have definitely worked and which ones maybe not so and those that have worked I will then scan to a much higher resolution at home uh, because then it's it's free and also I'm not paying to have a 36 exposure film um, scanned I'm actually only paying um, to well I am paying for a 36 exposure scan but you know only at very very low res all the high res stuff that I might play with and maybe print, that's uh, all for free in effect. And of course, the more I do it at home, the more the cost of the kit and software that I've got will actually start to pay for itself. But it's definitely something worth exploring. I'm really enjoying my re-engagement with film. So much so, I'm actually teetering on the idea of investing in a medium format camera and actually playing with slightly larger negatives because I'm told the quality is a lot better. So there's only one way to find out, isn't there? And you know what? If I try it and I don't like it, well then I'll just put it back on eBay. I might make a bit of a loss. I might not. So what? <laughs> uh, worth noting, Hugh, those last two frames that you took, they were with a red filter. A red filter is supposed to increase contrast in a black and white image, and this is a black and white film. I have no idea whether it works or not. There's only one way to actually find out, and that's to give it a go. And yeah, if you've tried it yourself, please post a comment, let me know. Also, let me know what you think about film photography. I know lots of people um, you know, seem to think it's a bit of a waste of time, it's old technology, it's dead. Um, don't bother, but I, I think it's something that's growing. Um, and the more it grows, the cheaper it'll get. So there we go. Right, I'm gonna leave this video uh, here uh, because I know that the window of opportunity where it's not raining is very, very brief. And I want to make the most of that opportunity. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please give it a like. And if you're into landscape photography and want to see more landscape photography uh, type content, then please consider subscribing to my channel. It's free and you can unsubscribe at any time. Until the next time we're back out in the landscape, be it with a film camera or a digital camera, take care, stay safe, and I shall see you all soon.